from Jeremiah chapter one, 2, verse 13, My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. How many people do you have in your prayer meeting? The prayer meeting has almost died. Not just in Presbyterian churches, but in Pentecostal churches, in Baptist churches. We've forsaken God, particularly we've forsaken the prayer meeting. One of the young pastors that comes to us, he got moved by the power of God. He went to his church and said, look, I'm going to preach Sunday morning, Sunday night, but not Wednesday night. We're going to pray. He's in a country church. He went from six to Wednesday night to six. They don't want to pray. We had a prayer meeting where people drove four, five, and six hours. And there were people that came, and they belonged to famous churches in, in uh, California. And they came over and said, look, we know why God's brought us in this area. We need to learn to pray. We went to a very popular church. It's attended by dozens, hundreds of film stars and others, but there's no prayer life there. God has given you a job, do it. If you die, that's what it takes. I remember one day he said, Len, don't let anybody diminish your appetite or zeal for prayer. We're not just going to raise nice healthy children. We don't want to do more than that. We want to produce spiritual offspring. And the reason those superstars that came to our prayer meetings didn't continue, well, they heard men that were praying with anointing. Again, they heard this fellow crying with tears for the uh, different tribes in America. It, it's astounding that, uh, what, two and a quarter American Indians? Where's David Brainerd today? There isn't a brain up there. How many of you deacons come to prayer meetings? What did they do in the upper room when the Holy Ghost came? They gave themselves continually to fundraising, did they? What did they do? give ourselves continually to prayer. We're not seeking him. We're seeking revival. We're seeking healing. We're seeking miracles. It's not that we need. If we get God, we get all that's needed. And revival is when God comes down. When the world population was five million, did God love it? Yes. Does he love it less when it's five billion? If God isn't willing that any should perish when it's five million, is he more willing that many should perish now? God's going to raise up men. I pray for Romania and behind the anchor every day of my life. You got, God's got to upset our whole schedules, our lifestyle, our way of eating, our way of living, our way of socializing in the church. God help us. Sure you can get a hearty church. If, if you put a chicken supper before the prayer meeting, they'll come for the chicken supper. You drop the chickens, you'll drop the crowd. Do you know that man, Andrews? God called him to go to uh, Israel, and he mastered Hebrew. And when he got there, God said, go back. He said, but people gave him a, do as I say, go back. Intercede for America. What did he do? For 30 years, 
He prayed from 10 o'clock in the night till 5 o'clock in the morning by himself. He said, Mr. Rain, there's going to be an awakening before Jesus comes. There's going to be a revival that will sweep one billion people into the kingdom of God. Well, that's a lot. But there are five billion in the world. Are the other four billion going to hell? The greatest revival in the world right now is amongst the Muslims. Why? Because they're prepared to die. You can't scare them. We're prepared to die. Our folk are not prepared to live. Sure, they'll come to a camp, they think, ride horses or have uh, play tennis or some other thing. I know there's nothing wrong in that. But where's the passion? It's young men that see vision. I'm not trying to escape it. Dear God, the prayer meeting has to become the most attractive thing in the church. And no man is greater than his prayer life. I don't care how many church members he has. 